you know your blood group uh, please see pastor wole at the end of the service to give you more information remember this year we are blessed to be a blessing so if you've been blessed with blood you have to give blood amen okay uh let's be a blessing she doesn't she doesn't have to go and start buying blood uh so please and from what i heard the more blood they take out of you the more blood comes back in you uh, that's what i heard so you know uh so please see pastor Wally, b plus b minus very important the surgery is on tuesday they need the blood o, o, o plus o negative as well okay uh please uh see pastor Wally, and they'll tell you uh, give you more information it will really be a blessing if we do that after service thank you so much uh my wife of 22 years came back this morning uh, you people are not happy for me i have been a bachelor for almost two weeks and none of you outside of one person said pastor how are you doing how are you coping is it gary you're drinking is it indomie you're eating okay um the person who brought food for me you know yourself god bless you thank you Thank you. Well, my wife came, actually came in just as I was coming for first service. She was, um, she just came in this morning flight. So this message will be very short. Let the hearer understand. Let the hearer what? In fact, she's been telling me that, you know, because I first said, I know you're just coming in this morning. But you still need to come for service. So he's been telling me, my husband, you know, I'm so tired. I said, don't worry, we're going home soon. You know that kind of tiredness. She doesn't want to say, you know, we need to go home. Key, I can see the smile on your face. So it's a 15-minute message so I can take my wife home. Somebody say hallelujah. So if I'm not preaching where this service, you know the reason. I need to do quickly so I can do what? Say, when I begin to preach, I say, Pastor. Go home, oh. Amen. I have missed you so much. I miss you so much. I made the right choice in 1997. Praise God. Praise God. To God be all the glory. I want to pray and I declare that every marriage here works in the name of Jesus. I declare that every spouse here, you bring joy, you bring laughter to your partner in the name of Jesus. I declare that you will not endure your marriage in the name of Jesus. You will enjoy your marriage in the name of Jesus. I declare over every marriage here that the voice of joy and rejoicing shall not depart from your home in the name of Jesus. I declare that neighbors will hear you laughing all the time in the name of Jesus. And everything fighting and attacking your home and your marriage. The power is broken this Sunday in the name of Jesus. Where the devil is after your marriage, it is broken this Sunday in the name of Jesus. And I pray for every single who is here, desiring and trusting God for a partner. The Bible says uh, that for every male, there's a female. And indeed, for every female, there's a male. I pronounce and I declare over you that you will find the male that belongs to you in the name of Jesus. And you will find the female that belongs to you in the name of Jesus. May God give you your Boaz in the name of Jesus. May God give you your, your Proverbs 31 woman in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have declared this Sunday morning. And the church says what? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, we declare this month by divine inspiration. We declared May as the month of grace. Hallelujah. Now, does it mean that every other month outside of May, you will not experience grace? Of course you will. But every once in a while, uh, we notice that God, uh, in what we call uh, his Kairos, Kairos season, God begins to do specific things in specific seasons. Hallelujah. Okay? But every time, of course, June, July, August, you will receive grace in the name of Jesus. You know, uh, Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1 says, Ask of the Lord rain in the time of latter rain. Our media, if you're able to show that, it will be a blessing. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1, we're familiar with that scripture. Ask uh, the Lord for rain in the time of latter rain. And we have said over and over in this church, Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1, uh, that God, one of the mysteries of God is even though God is God's will to do something for you, God still expects you to ask. And that's why it says pray. 
Or ask and you shall receive. Okay, seek. But he says that he knows you have need of those things. But he still says to what? That's the mystery of the kingdom. So you should say ordinarily, without, without asking for rain, shouldn't rain for, well, that's the mystery of the kingdom. Well, you can see that. He said, ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. So it means that uh, this month of May, you will ask for grace and grace will be given to you in the name of Jesus. This is the acceptable season for grace. Somebody say amen. This is the acceptable season for grace. So when you ask for grace, this uh, season, God will say, I give it to you. Hallelujah. Now let me preach to your neighbor say, you shall receive grace this month in the name of Jesus. Now we, on Wednesday, because... Um, I mean, haven't been a preacher for, for, for quite some time now. Uh, I know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I knew that it's not just enough uh, to declare the month as the month of grace. If you don't have understanding in that area, then you will not be able to maximize the season. Is somebody hearing pastor this morning? Okay. If you don't have an understanding of something, then you will not be able to fully maximize it. So if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you want to be able to maximize this grace season, then we must teach you. And like I say all the time, faith is not actually based on knowledge. Faith is based on understanding. Are you here this morning? Faith is based not on knowledge, not mere information. Many of us have information about different things, but we don't have an understanding on those things. Whenever somebody says, oh, I see, you know what? Understanding has come. And you may think you understand what grace is until I preach it. And so we began to look at grace last Wednesday. But unfortunately, probably it was maybe one third of the people in this service that were there. And I believe that we were blessed on Wednesday. Was anybody here on Wednesday? I mean, several of you uh, said to me, Pastor, just out of this world message. Uh, and then God began to, I was going to continue um, the message on Abraham, but God stopped me yesterday evening and said, it will not be right that over two-thirds of the church are not able to hear the message of grace because many of them will come on Wednesday. And so God's grace became available. Is somebody here? God's grace, grace became what? So I am going to, as much as I don't like it, I'm going to almost re-preach what I preached on Wednesday because of the grace of God. Because of the grace of God. Because of the grace of God. But I just want to, you know, I just telling Pastor Nima, uh, this this morning here, I don't want us to have a church where the only time you come to church is when there is a big activity. African prison night, the place will be full. Um, one other big name, everybody will come to church. A true Christian shows up in church whether it is a big activity or not. You don't come to church because it's worship night. And like I put on Facebook some, sometime last week, every time you come before God's presence, it carries the potential of changing your life. And most people don't even know this. Please hear, Pastor. Most of you don't know this. When Elijah, I believe it was Elijah, went to Mount Horeb to encounter God, Awesome, awesome passage of scripture. Pastors, God was not in the noise. God was not in the earthquake. God was not in all of the, the rocks where shaking everything. All of the things that happened on that mountain, God was not there. The Bible declares that God was in the still small voice. Every time we show up, like Wednesday was, I believe, was such a blessing. But it wasn't one we celebrated. Every Wednesday when we gather, God is here with us. Have me ask your neighbor, will you be here this Wednesday? No, ask them. And then ask yourself, will, will I be here this Wednesday? So, one, one of the reasons why I'm also doing this, it became clear as we began to teach on grace last Wednesday, that, that it would be impossible to be able to ex exhaust the concept of grace in even in four Sundays. So, I'm going to do it on Wednesday and Sunday, Wednesday and Sunday. So I will do it this Sunday. We will continue on Wednesday. And if God allows us, next Sunday, we will continue. Because hear me, church. And I say this, I mean, as I stand on God's platform. Probably the most important word for new covenant believers is the word grace. 
I'm going to say that again. Probably the most important word outside of probably the name of Jesus for, for, for New Testament believers is the word what? The reason why you don't know it is what I'm going to teach today. We're going to hear this morning. Probably the most important word outside of the name of Jesus is the word what? Grace is such a powerful word. If I many years ago, I thought on the force of grace. You know, many of you, when they say, okay, are you coming to see me tomorrow? You will say something like, by the grace of God. You don't, have, you don't even have a clue what that means. You don't have a clue when you say, somebody say, um, are you coming to see me tomorrow? And you say, by the grace of God. Think deeply about that. It means that even you, you know that the grace is what makes the difference. If it's not the grace of God, there's no guarantee that you wake up tomorrow. If not the grace of God, there's no guarantee that even as you're journeying to that appointment, you will not down the road. Grace is what makes the difference. I said grace is what makes the difference. And I want to say to somebody this Sunday morning, grace has found you in the name of Jesus. If that is you, you want to stand up this morning and celebrate the grace of God over your life. It's by the grace of God that you're here this Sunday. It's by the grace of God that your children are alive and well. It's by the grace of God that your, your husband is alive. It's by the grace of God that your wife is alive. It's by the grace of God that your parents are still alive. It's by the grace of God that your siblings, they are doing well. It's by the grace of God that we're not in a hospital with our legs hanging from somewhere. It's not by the grace, it's by the grace of God uh, that we're not going through dialysis uh, every week. Uh, it's by the grace of God. And there came Jesus. Uh, Jesus who, who represents to us uh, the greatest expression of God's grace. Uh, one time he said to the people, uh, he, said, he said those 11 uh, who died uh, at, the, at, the, at the tower of Siloam, uh, he said were the greater sinners he said, we're there greater sinners. He said, the fact that you didn't die is the grace of God. The people who have accidents every day, you think you're more righteous. Oh, if somebody came out into this house this morning, come on, can we, can we celebrate the giver of grace? Huh? Can we celebrate? Huh? Can you lift up your voice? I huh? said, thank you, my father. Thank you for the on a Isala Bruka. Thank you for the grace of God. Thank you for the grace of our Lord Jesus. Please be seated. And so, it's going to be impossible for me to re-preach last Wednesday because I don't have 40, 50 minutes to, to, but please make sure you get the message. We're going to repeat a number of the key things there. Now we began to say that God deals with man in dispensations. God deals with his creation in what? In dispensation. And Pastor Nyama did a, a great job uh, before she traveled, I think three, son, three Wednesdays ago, and, and tried to explain to us the meaning of the word dispensation. Dispensation just simply means uh, an era or a time or a season. Okay, meaning that every dispensation or every time there's something it carries. Is somebody here this Sunday? Say every every dispensation carries something. Okay, when God created time, God put in time certain things. In fact, the main reason why time was created in the form is because God needed to put certain things in time. Did you hear what I said? So when God created time, do you know what he did? He put things in time. And that's why the Bible says that for every, every purpose, there's a time. And a time for everything. Are you here this morning? Okay, and Pastor Neymar did a, 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 I mean, just blew us away. She said, many years ago, we were used to calling pharmacies or, you know, in, in hospitals, they call them dispensaries. Is that what they're called? And what do dispensaries do? They dispense medicine. So, she said in dispensations, <laughs> the dispensation, whatever God is doing that time, he dispenses that thing to you. Now, 
Theology says that we are in the dispensation of grace. This is the time of what? Of grace. We don't have the time to talk to you about the seven dispensations. But just know that we are in the time of grace. Somebody say, I am in the time of grace. Okay, we're in the time of grace. However, last uh, Wednesday, we tried to go back a bit and to look at how has God dealt with people before now. Because unless you understand uh, a background knowledge of how God has dealt, you may not fully understand how God is dealing with us now. But the first thing maybe we may need to do is to look at the definition of grace. The definition of grace. Because the, when you understand what grace means, then it will help you to be able to, un to understand how grace can affect you. And one of the things we said on Wednesday, probably the most important uh, definition of grace is this. It's God's willingness to get involved in your life. God's willingness to even get involved with you. Now, it's not by your right that God must get involved with you. Do you know that? It's actually by his grace that God actually decides to get involved with Pastor Wally. And we said sometimes the way, one way we can understand a principle is to look at the opposite. And we said on Wednesday, can you imagine if God went on vacation? Here, yeah, Pastor, now. God went on vacation for one year. In fact, when I said that, Sister Debbie said, Pastor, one year, one second alone. Because for some of us, one second of God not being there can mean life and death. Now, when we talked about, imagine your communication with God has always been by phone. But this time, you pick up your phone and call God. And we said on Wednesday, you hear, this phone is switched off. Now, we said on Wednesday that sometimes when you hear, when you call people and say, this number can, cannot be reached, there's still hope. You keep trying. Because you may be saying, maybe the person is out of coverage. But I said to them on Wednesday, when you hear this number is switched off, how do you feel? Now, God goes on vacation to Hawaii for one year. For some of us, we are where we are now by the grace of God. So I can't imagine how my life would be if God went away for one year. I I'm hoping this is sinking in. Can you imagine? Some of you, you're driving, you're almost having an accident. You said Jesus. But you know that when God goes away for one year, you can't even say Jesus. He won't hear. They're sucking people in your office. You know that it is by his grace. You go and kneel and say, Lord, I thank you for the covenant of exemption. If many shall fall on my side, but it shall not come near me. But in that one year, he has gone to Hawaii. You can pray. Is somebody understanding grace now? So it's God's willingness to say, I won't go on vacation. Come on, can we celebrate God this Sunday morning? Come on, can you celebrate uh, that your God is not out of reach? Uh, your God has not gone to Hawaii. Uh, he has not gone to Monaco. Uh, he's not sleeping. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. Uh, because there are some gods uh, that go on vacation. Uh, you don't know what I'm saying. Uh, there are some gods uh, that seem to be sleeping. Uh, because a day came, uh, minister, uh, there was a contest somewhere. And everybody said, call on your God. Uh, and uh, there was certain men, 400 prophets. Uh, come on, let me preach with you, my, my, my brother. Certain 400 men, uh, uh, they began to call on their God. Uh, they began to jump and dance. Uh, there was praise and worship going on. Uh, but it seems like their God uh, had gone on vacation. Uh, so Elijah said, uh, uh, what is going on? Uh, what is your, is your God sleeping? Uh, how come he can't hear you? But I want to say to somebody this day, there is no day that your God will go on vacation. Uh, he 
says, I'm your God and I neither sleep nor slumber. Maybe some other gods, they are taking siesta, but there's a God that I serve. I don't know why you're still sitting down because I hope that you know that your God, he neither sleeps and nor slumbers. He's the ever present help in the time of need. His name is Jehovah Shalom. His name is Jehovah, Jehovah Shama. He's ever present. He's ever present. Even when you don't know he's there, he is there. He is there. You know what I'm telling you? That probably the most important definition of God is the willingness to get involved in your life. Because many times we look for God in these sweet, sweet things. But there are many things, many times, Pastor, God is evil in the things that don't look too sweet in your life. And that is all things work together for good. And so when Joseph was thrown into the pit and sold, God was there maneuvering, orchestrating. Joseph was thinking he was going to be a local champion in Palestine, but God had a better deal. And so I want to say to somebody, even when you don't know that God is in that place, peradventure is even God that pushed you into the trouble. Come on, somebody celebrate this Sunday morning. <laughs> When I was preparing, God said I should say to a sister, that relationship that went bad, maybe now God spoil him. I, I want to marry him. I want to marry him. God has seen in two years' time, you will become, he will nearly kill you. And God says, I love you too much to let you get into that marriage. Because what you know is too limited. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus this Sunday morning. Be seated, be seated. So, grace is God's willingness. Decision to be involved in my life. Any Igbo people here? Ndibo, no, neba. See, Pastor, me, I'm losing my language. Ono, no, keba, today. Chineke, the what? Are they involved? See, they're laughing at me. See the way I'm speaking Igbo like Yoruba man speaking Igbo. God is what? Can you lift up your right? You want to say, Father, thank you because you're involved in my life. That is the grace of God that has brought God's involvement in our lives. And we began to say, um, all, all that definitions of grace, please, please stay with me. I, I like this. Uh, it, it means grace, different definitions. It means the exceptional kindness from God. Exceptional kindness from God. It means privilege from God. It means God stepping into your situation to make a worthwhile difference. It means God's mercy. It means God's approval. It means God taking your side. Somebody say, God taking my side. It means God taking a liking to you. I like that. It means God doing what? Taking a liking to you. And like you're going to see as we proceed in this message, it appears that there are certain people that God has taken a liking to. Is that person here today? Now lie, you're not there here. I'm the only one that God likes. Is that person in this service? Alvin, I, I, did God take a liking to you? Do you suspect that God likes you? If that is you this Sunday morning, come on. Can we celebrate Jesus? God taking a liking. On Wednesday, we said we cannot talk about the help of God without talking about the grace of God. Because it is God's grace that makes God to help us. And we said on, on Wednesday, we said how many people here are witnesses of the help of God? Are there, is there probably 10 people here? You are a witness of the help of God. When it looks like help was not coming from anywhere. When it looks like everybody you thought would help you. For some reason, they said we can't help you. Some of them may not even be that they are being wicked. They just don't have the capacity to help you. But when you thought it was the end of the road. When you were at your wit's end. When it looks like the 
the, the night will not end. When the doctor said, we can't help you. When the lawyer said, you are going to jail on this matter. The help of God showed up. If that is you this morning, you want to give God a 20 second praise. If you have ever known the help of God, come on temple of glory. A 20 second praise. A 20 second praise. If there's anybody here, God has been your helper. Come on, when you look at yourself and how far he has brought you, he has been your Ebenezer. He has been your Ebenezer. Thus far, he has helped you. Sister Debbie, you know when I was preparing this message, God said that one of the ways God has shown us his grace, has anybody here been a recipient of something you didn't ask God, but he did it? No, you, di you didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what Pastor said. You see, maybe this year, God had something happened to you, and you knew it was not on your prayer list. You, you didn't even ask. But without your asking, he did it for you. Jesus did it for you. You know, early this year, trying to get admission for Emmanuel abroad, and you know, it just uh, they didn't work out because we started the process very late. And to be honest with you, we just said to Emmanuel, okay, you lose one year. Uh, you know, just go and um, go work with your uncle or do something, university will be in September. And my wife and I were just sitting jejeli in our house. Somebody called me. Say, Pastor, I want to help with the manager's admission. It was not a prayer point. Because we have said the man will go to school in September. In fact, the person went on to say we will push for 100% scholarship. But eventually, the man got 50% scholarship. It was not a prayer point. Who else but God? Have you ever received a phone call? I said, somebody just said, I just want to help you. Do you have a business name? Do you have this? It was not a prayer point. Can we celebrate Jesus this morning? When you were weak, he became strong. To be honest with you, things that have happened to me this year, it was when I was weak. God became strong. When you were foolish, the grace of God became wisdom. You could have made a mess of your life. But the grace of God. By 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 the grace of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. By the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We also said on Wednesday. That the grace of God is the favor of God. The favor of God. It means, you know, when there's favor, it means there was an issue of more than one person involved. And so God says, not you. Not you. <laughs> oh, I wish I had. Pastor, well, you know, the Bible says in John chapter 5, <laughs> at the pool of Bethesda, Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Many people who they were sick were in that pool. And, and the truth is at that pool, you needed to really be at the edge of the pool. Because at a certain point, at the Kairos moment, an angel goes to that pool to stay it up. And those moments, in, the, in a sense, were like moments of grace. Okay? Oh, Jesus. But there was a man at that pool. And that man had been there for 38 years. Now, that's a long time to be in this situation. But, but, but the man could not get to the pool because he was paralyzed. When you're paralyzed, it means on your own, you cannot move. Has anybody been in a place you, it's beyond you? You can't move. Somebody needs to carry you. Somebody needs to help you. But, but the man was in a, a worse situation because he said, I have no man. Is there anybody here Really, when you look at your life, you don't have any man. And Jesus showed up. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. The Bible began that chapter 5 by saying, 
he knew that the man, the man didn't tell Jesus. Listen, the Bible says, Jesus said, he knew the man had been there for a long time. You don't think God knows where you are? And then you know what he did? That is grace. He came, the man was far from the edge of the pool. So Jesus came, there were many, many people with situations. So Jesus was doing like this. Sorry. He was looking for where to pass. Sorry, sorry. Make way, make way. Grace. It was grace. It was grace that was looking for that man. <laughs> grace. God knows what, maybe, maybe it was even one kilometer away. And said to him, do you want to be made whole? He said, Lord, I have no man. He said, but you have me now. I hear God saying, this week for somebody, he will jump others. More qualified. I say he will jump others. More qualified. Those who have been in your front, they went ahead of you. They must have started before you. And they have all the qualifications and all the connections. But grace will find somebody this week in the name of Jesus. The favor of God will find you. You will say, why me, Lord? He said, because of favor. And we said on Wednesday that favor by itself means merit is removed. It can't be favor if merit is involved. Is somebody here this Sunday? It cannot be favor if merit is involved. Do you understand what that means? We said on Sunday, if you applied for a job in Shell and they said, all we need, if you don't have first class, don't even bother to apply. You have first class. But you hear God saying, apply. So we said on Sunday, if you had first class and you got the job, was favor needed? Merit spoke. But with your third class and pass, the interview panel, you, you came and you said, <laughs> you said, did you read the advert? You said, I did. What are you doing here? Third class? But suddenly, they said, excuse us for a minute. They don't know what. Suddenly they call you back. Say, we don't know why we're doing this. Uh, that is going to be somebody's person in the name of. When merit is, is excluded, when your hard work is excluded, that is your merited favor of God. And we pray that this month of May, you will encounter it in the name of Jesus. Some of you, you have messed up with your life. You slept around. There's really no reason why you shouldn't have HIV. There's really no reason why you should have children right now. But the mercy of God and the favor of God, all the mistakes, all the rubbish you did, excluded you. You shouldn't have children. Your fallopian tubes should be tattered and messed up. Uh, by the favor of God uh, and the grace of God. Uh, look at you. You have children now. How? By your merit, you shouldn't even have half a child. But grace found you. So we began to say that grace, as we know it, should actually be a new covenant, a new testament teaching. But we found out that even under the old covenant in the, new, in the old testament, we, we found that God was still at work by his grace. Even under the old covenant. So quickly now, it wasn't available to everybody. But we found that it was available to certain people. And so we're looking at the shadow. But when we come on Wednesday, we begin to look at the substance. But I said on Wednesday that... Anything you see has a shadow, has a substance. Anytime you see a shadow, there's what? Now hear me. Anytime you see a shadow, you don't see a substance. Oh boy. Run. No. Do you agree with me? Big race. You see the shadow of somebody going. But you don't see the person. You know, for my village, Sister Alice. I go pick race. So. You see shadow worker. I tell you why shadow stop. Shadow they dance. But you don't see we get the shadow. But somebody said that the shadow of God is even greater than this 
the substance of the devil. Because he just said, he said, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under what? Now, once you dwell in I pray that God's shadow is over you this season in the name of God's shadow is over your business. God's shadow is over your children. This is in the name of Jesus. He said it's like the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. The shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So we say, if the shadow we saw grace in the Old Testament, can you imagine what the real thing is in the New Covenant? And so the old, the, new, the old Testament, first of all, we saw that Israel was favored. Somebody say Israel was favored. Now Israel, even till tomorrow, God has favored that nation. Even till 20 million years time. In fact, Paul, writing to the church in Romans, he said, listen, he said, you Gentiles. He said, look, Israel is the original branch. But he said, if God cut them off and you are grafted in, he said, listen, don't forget to. He said, God still has chosen Israel. So, on, on, on common grace follows that nation. Israel is in the middle of eight enemy nations. Bigger than them. Bigger than them. Because God's favor is upon that land. In fact, do you know, Pastor Soji, that when you pray for Israel, you're blessed. That is how blessed they are. Somebody say favor. But then let's look at all the times that the word grace appears. Let's see. Uh, we won't be able to do all of them, nine of them, or eight of them. But Joy, can we, can we just see how much of them we can do? And then we'll just move into the meat and then we close. Let's just see. Um, outside of Israel, the very first time the word grace was used in the Bible was concerning a man called Noah. The very first time the word uh, grace appears in the Bible. C can you show it? Quickly now, quickly, quickly. Well, that scripture is in Genesis chapter 6, 7 to 8. And it says that God was angry with the whole earth. God was so angry. But the Bible says in verse 8, that Noah found grace with God. Noah found grace with God. Noah found grace with God. Now, the second time we see the word grace uh, used... It's concerning uh, the man Abraham. Now Abraham, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 18, I believe in verse 3, the Bible records that Abraham was at home relaxing one afternoon. And then three, in quote, men showed up in his house. But we knew it was divine visitation. We knew it was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And Abraham, you know, saying that because he knew God the Father, Son will not just show up in your house. He said, if I have found favor with you. Please sit down. Let me feed you God. The next time we see the word grace, I'm not sure why they're not showing it now. Okay, the next time we see the word grace uh, was concerning the man Moses. Okay, in, in uh, I was going to say in Moses chapter 33. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say Moses chapter 33. Okay, I preached in the first service and I want to go home. My wife, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Moses chapter 33. Okay, Moses chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33 in fact, Moses repeatedly uses that, uh, that thing. He said, if I have found grace in your sight, if I have found grace in your sight, because he knew, Pastor Nyema, that indeed he had found grace in God's sight. Praise the Lord. Next time we see it was concerning the man Gideon. Next time we see the word grace uh, was concerning uh, the young boy Samuel. The Bible records uh, and that the young, the young boy Samuel uh, grew in stature but then the Bible says, grew in favor with God and with men. And I said on Wednesday, anytime you begin to grow in favor with God, men don't have a choice. They will favor you in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I grow in favor with God. Come on, declare, say, I grow in favor with God. This month of May and beyond, say, I grow in favor with God. And therefore, men will favor me. Now, what good is it that God favors you and men don't favor you? Then I use less favor. But anytime men, I mean God favors you, men don't have a choice. They will favor you this season in the name of Jesus. Now, but because of time, 
who, I mean, of course, there was Zerubbabel uh, in Zechariah. Uh, the Bible, I believe, Zechariah Zachari, chapter 4, verse 7. Zechariah was, was on a project. Uh, and God said to him, uh, He said, It won't be by power, it won't be by might. Uh, he said, The hands that began this, the same hands shall complete it. Is somebody here? The hands that began it, the same hands uh, with shouts of grace, even under the old covenant elder form. God was saying to a man, He said, The only way you can finish this thing is by grace. So once you start a project, because it's a project, grace, grace, anything that is too difficult for you, say grace. Say that's the only way it will happen. Somebody say hallelujah. Okay. Now I, I, I like the merry one. Sisters, are you here today? Daughters fulfilling destiny. Are you here today? Come on now, shout hallelujah. Now, 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 you say pastor. Was Mary not in the new covenant? No. By, listen, I hope you know all the gospels, the four gospels, they were still under the old covenant. It was after Jesus had left. So Mary was an old covenant person. Everybody you saw under, in the gospels were old, old covenant people. They didn't experience until Christ died, the new covenant. So Mary was still under the old covenant. But let's see something there. Luke one twenty eight. I like this. Quickly, Luke one twenty eight, and anything you see here, uh -huh. <laughs> this is our media on a trial. You must join the media. All of you were here, <laughs> so when we don't leave Zachariah since now, now you come there. <laughs> Praise God. Luke one twenty eight. Can we read together now? Want to go? We said on Wednesday, imagine you go home now as you're taking off your clothes. One bright light, shh, you just see angel with massive wings. And it says to you, You are highly favored. That's the last day any sadness will be on your face. If somebody here shows up, Mary is just doing her thing, and an angel shows up. And say, you are highly favored. And we said, if the angel just left it as your favor, that one is enough for me. But to come and qualify the favor by, but I want to say to you, there is no favor of God that is low in the name of Jesus. If you're here this Sunday, I said there's no favor of God uh, that is low because that which is from above uh, is above all. Uh, and so if that favor is from God, uh, it is a high favor. I said it is a high favor. If your pastor favors you, not low favor, but not give God favor somebody. You are highly favored. Highly favored. If they pick you one out of ten, you're favored. If they pick you one out of twenty, you're favored. If they pick you one out of hundred, Pastor Sajid, you're favored. But if they pick you one out of four million, aye, aye, aye. I say aye. I hear somebody in the name of Jesus. You shall be picked one out of a million. I say you shall be picked one out of ten million. Out of your community. Out of your state. God is saying, no, not you, not you. You T.O.G. man. You T.O.G. woman. Am I talking to somebody this Sunday? I said to them on Wednesday, the angel announced that high favor. But since scripture says to me in Revelation that I am the angel of the house. Your pastor is your angel. By the way, you may not know this. Uh, all those letters to the angels, uh, or angels of those churches, uh, was to the pastors of the church. Uh, so I came all the way from life camp. Uh, in the name that is above every name, uh, I mount the altar of God. Uh, I stand on this altar as the angel of the house, uh, and I pronounce upon you, and I make a decree upon you, if you be in this service today, if you're a member of this church, uh, I declare over you this month, uh, you are highly favored 
the one that confirms the, the word of his servant uh, and the one that fulfills the counsel of his messenger. If you're sitting down, you're not your pastor. If you're sitting down, go leave this church and don't come back again. Uh, because I said to you, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, uh, I stand like a misalahaza. And I said the same way, Angel Gabriel uh, pronounced uncommon favor upon a, a teenage girl, uh, just 15, 16 years old. Uh, he said, I went through every tribe. Uh, I went through the 12 tribes, uh, but I couldn't find anybody. Uh, but, uh, but God said, uh, there's that girl called Mary. Uh, she will carry the Holy Seed. Uh, she will carry something bigger than her. Uh, she will carry my son. Uh, and so when the angel came, uh, uh, he said, hell Mary, uh, you are full of grace. Uh, this is, must be grace. Uh, because I don't know why God chose you. Of all the virgins in Israel, uh, why did God choose you? I pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, you will wonder uh, why God chose you. But it's grace. Uh, it shall be by grace. Uh, Mary would have been wondering, uh, why me? Why me? And for somebody here, you're saying, uh, Pastor, this thing you're saying, uh, how can it be? David said to the angel, you say I go carry picking. Can't you understand, my angel? You know all things, angel. I'm not even married. How can it happen? It's an impossible thing you're saying. But I've come to declare that with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. With God, yes, you're 40-something, not married. Yes, your tubes are messed up. Can you carry a child? Yes, your husband, sperm count is zero. But I've come to say to you, you don't need God. You don't need man, sorry, where favor is involved. You don't need man where grace is involved. He said, Mary, you don't need to go and sleep with Joseph because you're not married yet. But the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. I want to say to somebody. The Bible calls them the spirit of grace. <laughs> if God said it, he would do it. You don't need to sleep with any man. You don't need to compromise. He said the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. In the name that is above every name. May is your month of grace. May is your month of grace. I declare yet again, this month your highly favor. Please be seated. Pastor still needs to go home with his wife. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, the only way you connect with grace is faith. The Bible says, we're saved, we're delivered by grace. True faith. That means, the things I'm saying now, some of you, it sounds like foolishness. But for those who are foolish enough to believe, the only way you connect with grace is by foolish faith. Round up in six, seven minutes. So we can go home. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we began to say that there are five components of grace. We just did, did, did one. We looked at one. And we said, every time grace in the old covenant, every time grace is provoked or invoked, what we notice with everybody in the Old Testament when they noticed that God favored them, the next thing we noticed was that prayer came out of it. Petition. Let me try and explain it. There are so many examples. The moment that Moses, not this Moses, the moment that Moses realized that God had favored him, Elder Fong, the next thing we saw with Moses in that chapter 33, is an interesting scripture. Everybody will notice that God has favored them. They were not stupid people. They were, they were not foolish. He said, Lord, if I had found favor in your sight, 
Who will go with me on this journey? Yeah. Abraham responded, If I have found favor with you, can you wait a bit in my house so I can give you food? Every time grace and favor was mentioned by God, the wise people took advantage of it. Because I said on Wednesday, what use is it that you have, you have favor with God and you don't ask him for anything? Buhari shows up and says, I just like you. I don't know why. I just like you. Now, except you are a mini of the highest level, if somebody say, I just like you, you don't ask her for anything. Then you are a heavy mini. Mordecai knew that Esther had found favor with the king. Because out of all the women, there was just something about Esther. Out of all the women, the king chose Esther. So, he said, hello girl, we can't waste this opportunity. The king has favored you, so do something for us. I want to say to somebody here, Please stand up so we can go home. I can go home my way. Stand up. I, I, I didn't even go anywhere near what I thought. Everybody stand up, stand up. Stand up. And I said this on Wednesday. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> Gideon. We know Gideon. When, when, when the angels showed up and said, Gideon, you have found favor with God, though. You're going, God is going to use you. Gideon began to ask God for uncommon things. Gideon didn't ask God for small things. He said, God, if you are claiming that I have found grace in your sight, show me a sign. Mm. Somebody said, show me a sign. He said, show me a sign. Why you say you like me now? So maybe we see something now. Perform. He said, I'm going to bring a fleece like cotton wool. He said, I'll take you to the threshing floor. Here, it, it can only take the favor of God for you to be testing God. Or else God will slap your face. But when God don't like you, ah, yeah, yeah. My son Ephraim is a very wise boy. Because he knows that daddy and mommy like him. Ephraim doesn't ask for small things. Ephraim was asking me when my wife was, before my wife traveled. He said, Daddy, I hope you're not, uh, don't joke with me. Oh. I hope I'm going to school abroad. Oh. I, I hope I am going to school. I like you, friend. If you like me, then show me a sign. He said this cutting wool. When I wake up in the morning, in the tiger God, oh, I want water due to be on it. But let everywhere else be dry. And you know what? You know what? Because God's favor was there. He said, I'll do it. I hear God saying to somebody who petitions now. He will do it in the name of Jesus. But Elder Fami didn't stop there. The man came the morning side and said, oh, well, well, well. So be, I have favor with you. I go ask you again. He said, tomorrow morning, let everywhere be full of water. But that cotton wool inside the water should be dry. Is somebody hearing pastor now? And when he came back, you know what? God did it. I've come to tell TOG now. I've come to say to you, yes, you, you look at me. The favor of God is with you. So can you take 20 seconds? If the favor of God with you, I want to take 20 seconds. Ask God for an impossible thing. Uh, Gideon says, show me a sign. Uh, if you claim that you have favored me, if you claim that I have found grace in your sight, uh, you want to step away from that neighbor uh, and say, Lord, uh, this favor cannot be frustrated. Uh, this favor cannot be in vain. Uh, if you said, uh, my, your grace uh, has located me, take 30 seconds. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
if God did it for Moses and did it for Gideon and did it for David, I want to tell somebody, what good is favor? What good is the grace of God? If you can't ask, if you can't draw on the favor, what good is the favor? What good is the grace? If you can't ask God to do something for you, then all of us, then there's no there's no advantage. But I've come to say to somebody who came to church this Sunday morning, is the grace advantage? There is advantage to grace. I said there's advantage to grace. Grace carries it carries it carries benefits. Ah yeah, 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 yeah. And the old testament people they understood it well. And so, Lord, if I have found favor on your sight, then Lord. Do this for me this month. Do this for me this month. Thank you, Father, this Sunday morning. Lord, I want to release this congregation into your hands this month. What they couldn't get by toil. What they couldn't get by struggle. What they couldn't get because they were not qualified. I pray in the name of Jesus. Your word declares that you have qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You have you yourself, by the death of your son Jesus, qualified us to be partakers of that mysterious inheritance. And therefore, Lord, I release favor. I release favor. I release qualification this week in the name of Jesus. be sit and bow down your heads. You know, this morning, we won't close service. I want to present an opportunity for you if you're here today. You see, grace is not for everybody really, in a way, in a sense. Favor is not for everybody. It's for those who have become his sons and daughters. And this Sunday, I want to give you an opportunity to enter into a relationship with him. The moment I gave my life to Christ in 1987, my life changed. I could ask God for anything. Even till today, since 1987, I can ask him for uncommon things. I can ask him for big things. And what I've, I found out with God is that many times I've asked God for small things. He said, my son, you're asking too little. He gives me bigger things. But it starts with a relationship. I said, that is you this Sunday. Our time is fast spent. I want you to raise up your hand. I want to pray for you wherever you are. Say, Pastor, pray for me this Sunday. I want grace to locate me. Just raise up your hand quickly. I want to pray with anybody like that. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. I want to see your hand. So I connect you with Jesus. This, If you're raising your hand, raise it up boldly. I can see that hand. I can see that hand. Now quickly, run out. Take your bag and your Bible. Come to the front. Quickly, quickly. Quickly. Let's, uh, let's keep appreciating them as they come. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Come. Don't be ashamed. Just come, come, come. Let's appreciate them. They're coming. I saw a brother there. I saw a guy there. Quick. Come, come. You know, we have 20 seconds. There's somebody sitting there. And you say, what's the point of coming out? Just obey God. He stands at the door of your heart and he's knocking. Just quickly stand and come. Before I begin to pray, quickly jump up and come. Yes, you know yourself. Come now in 20 seconds. Come. Come, come, come. Somebody here. Come. Come, come. Thank you, Jesus. Now, those of you who are in front, repeat this prayer after me. Say, my dear Heavenly Father, come, sir. Quickly come. Say, my dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing me to church this Sunday to hear your word and to encounter your presence. I am a sinner. I ask for your mercy and your forgiveness. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for me. This Sunday, I receive Jesus Christ. I receive Jesus Christ into my life, into my heart, as my Lord, as my master. Now say, say Satan. Say Satan, I break my relationship with you. I will no longer walk with you. I have a new master. His name is Jesus. Say, thank you, Father, for receiving me and saving me. 
Say in Jesus name. Now shout amen. As simple as that prayer is. You are now born again. You are now saved. And the Bible says that if any man be in Christ. He's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold all things have become new. And as many as will come to him. He shall by no means cast away. On this holy altar. Father in the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus. Let the power of sin be broken in the name of Jesus. Let every relationship, anything that they are into, that is not of you. On this holy altar, the power is broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for a new covenant with you that takes effect right now. Thank you because the old covenant is broken in Jesus' name. We give you praise and we give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise for glorious liberty that has come upon them now in Jesus' mighty name. And the church says what? Come on now, the church says what? Amen. Can you stand up? Congratulations and welcome to the family of God. Come, just, just hold on. Please go, go, go with our brother. You know, for a few minutes, they'll just uh, take your details and you come back in the church. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus as they keep going. The Bible says that for one sinner who returns home, that the angels in heaven are happy. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this Sunday. And we ask, oh Lord, that we release the spirit and the power of grace over this house, over this church, in this new week, in Jesus' name. Amen. If I were you, I'll be here on Wednesday. We will push it forward. We'll begin to look at the other things. Pardon, awesome message. Make sure you're here on Wednesday at 6 p.m. And then if God allows us, we'll continue next Sunday. We're going to receive our tithes this morning. If God has blessed you this week, God has blessed you this month, 10% belongs to him. It's not yours. He said the tithe belongs to him. If you eat it, you have eaten God's money. Okay? But for some of us, it's also just to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for blessing me. I'm coming back with only one-tenth of what you have given to me. So if you're giving your tithe this morning, quickly come to the altar. Quickly, quickly. Quickly come to the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please show the account details of the church. You can always transfer your money electronically to our Zenith account. Can you show that there? Thank you. We also have a POS at the back. In case you have your uh, ATM card, you want to transfer money, we have an ATM. Sorry, we have us at the back father we thank you just want to lift up your tithe this morning thank you for the privilege of being blessed by you and father because you are the one who has blessed us we want to service that covenant yet again by bringing 10 out of the 100 and we ask the lord that you receive it from us in the name of jesus i mean now the blessings of the tithe that is in genesis with abraham and the blessing of the tithe that is in malachi chapter 3 let it come upon these ones in the name of jesus let the city answer to you in the name of jesus let that vocation, that sphere of influence, let it speak for you in the name of Jesus. I declare that you will no longer be at the bottom, beginning from today in the name of Jesus. Grace elevates you and lifts you to the top of your mountain in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Okay, you can just drop your... Father, we bless the bread and we bless the wine, like Abuza says here. Just go and take your, your communion, like Abuza says here. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, release life through the communion for them. In Jesus' name. Please, you're giving an offering stand. And those of you who give, who give towards uh, the covenant uh, seed or for the altar last, uh, uh, last Sunday, we're still praying for you and it will manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. Please stand up and wave your offering to God. Let it be indeed a wave offering to him this Sunday. Father, we thank you. Like Abeze Mele Brohazaya. Father, we have not come before you empty-handed. We ask, O oh Lord, let our offering be an acceptable one to you. Father, Noah gave you an offering. And Lord, it became one that provoked a new covenant. And you changed your mind towards the earth. Father, let our offering speak before you this, this Sunday in the name of Jesus. Let it affect our Monday all through to Saturday in the name of Jesus. Let it activate our harvest this season in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And somebody say, Amen. Now let's rejoice as we give to God. Let's rejoice. Tabernacle of David. Jesus, I love you. Oh. You do well, I thank you. Oh. You do make my life better. 
I call the praise you forever. Oh, you be back. You say, Jesus, I love you. Give me the. Oh, lo, 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 lo. Hey. Hey, hey. Do I say, Jesus, I love you. Oh. Hey, see you do well, I thank you. Oh. Oh God, you don't make my life better. I go to praise you forever. Oh. You'll be back. You say, Hey, Hey, Oh, no, 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 no. Oh God, you say, I say, Jesus, I love you. Oh. Hey, I say, you do well, I thank you. Oh. Oh God, you don't make my life better. I go to praise you forever. You be, oh God. Jesus, hey. Over the top, say, say. You don't make my life better. Oh God, we say. I say, joy overflow. In my heart, you say, sing and you. Oh, joy overflow. Oh, in my heart, in my heart. I will give you praise. Worship him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, joy overflow. Hey. Oh, yeah, in my heart, in my heart. Joy will overflow. Oh yeah, in my heart, in my heart. I will give you praise. I will worship. Oh God, oh God, we say. You know, as we close this Sunday, some of you say, Pastor, this your message is so sweet. Is it really like that? That's why grace is amazing. That's why. It looks too good to be true, but that's the grace of God. Please make sure you're here on Wednesday and we'll continue on Sunday, okay? Let me also say this. Some of you come to church, your face is like you drank liver queen throughout. Now, if you're not, if you don't have joy in God's presence or his house, go to a church where you'll be happy. Did you hear what I said? Now, we know that Nehemiah, because of the burden he carried for Israel, he appeared before a man, a king. And the king said, why is your face? Why are you frowning? And the Bible says, he was afraid. Because in those days, if you frown before the king, that's why if the king crack any joke, whether it's funny or not, you better laugh. Now, there's a God greater than any king. If you're not happy in God's house, look for a church where you're happy. Some of you, I'll just point to one and say, carry your Bible, go. I don't need people here who frown in God's presence. Did you hear what I said? The joy of the Lord is your what? You should have joy in God's presence. Well, if you don't like me, just even smile. <laughs> because of God. Somebody say hallelujah. Please don't forget this. Uh, there's a sister that really needs uh, um, blood. So please see Pastor Wale. He will tell you. And it's urgent because the surgery is on Tuesday. Pastor Wale will be somewhere here. Just say, I, I want to donate the blood. Please do that. Um, also, we need people in media. We need people in uh, evangelism and follow-up. We need people also in, um, what's the third one now? You church, okay? So please let us know. Don't just be coming to be served. It's time for you to be a servant in God's house. Amen. Praise God. Men, please make sure you register outside at the end of the service. Thank you for your patience. Pastor Yama, I know you are really, really, my husband, you have taken too much time. I'm going to take you home now. Amen. You'll be praying for me as I'm going home with her. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If your first time of coming to our church, I want to shake your hand and leave a blessing. Would you quickly, quickly come forward? I want to shake your hand and leave a blessing.
surely, say neighbor, certainly, goodness and mercy, grace and favor follows you this week in Jesus' name. Now say amen. God bless you. See you on Wednesday.